I got a mod for the intro, everyone. Look, we've made it. Hello everyone, I guess you know, hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day, and today we're here with a DK's guide for old school RuneScape and my endless adventure to make as many boss guides as possible. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. If you do, make sure to leave a like and let me know what you want to see in the future down below in a comment. And along with that, there are other places you can support me at down in the description below, and I would appreciate that greatly. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into the guide. As far as the requirements, these are the lesser requirements. Only 50 magic and 43 prayer would be nice. This is required to kill Dagonoth Rex. Dagonoth Rex drops a Berserk Ring which at the moment is worth 1.7 mil. Sometimes people like to camp that Dagonoth King alone because you can do it by itself. However, it's nowhere near efficient and I wouldn't recommend it, but you can come here at a low level and try that out. If you want to try the harder method, you will need 75 in your combats. Now, personally, that's just the requirement bare minimum. I would recommend 80s to 85s in these stats to make it a lot easier on you because you're going to have to kill three different Dagonoth Kings. And if you don't kill them fast enough, you will then have to deal with two at a time, possibly three at a time, but most most of the time it would be two at a time and it gets a bit more tricky so you can definitely come here with less the higher the easier kind of a given but here it matters a lot in addition to that Fremenic Trials would be nice to be able to get a pet rock if not you're going to need to find a partner that can get you into the island so breaking down the Dagonoth Kings the first one is the Dagonoth Rex this one is weak to magic and its attack style is melee based so this one you're going to be safe spotting its max hit is a 26 and it is the easiest because again it can be safe spotted and it can only attack within melee range so it's the least damaging of the three second one is the dagonoth supreme this one is weak to melee and attacks with range and its max hit is 30. this one's a little bit more annoying obviously the higher max hit in addition to the fact that it can hit you from range and this one is a medium threat between the three the highest threat of them all is dagonoth prime it's weak to range and attacks with a mage based attack its max hit is a 50 so quite a bit you really really want to focus on this one and of course with that 50 max hit it is the hardest boss as far as item rates to expect a hard clue is a 1 in 42 drop and an elite is a 1 in 750 so pretty easy to farm hard clues here each ring is a 1 in 128 chance however you can only get each ring from a designated Dagonoth Supreme and Rex are going to be the two notable ones here Supreme dropping the archers and the Rex dropping the berserker those two are worth a good bit of money while the Sears the prime drops isn't worth much at all pets are 1 in 5k from any of these Dagonoth Kings so pretty rare and as far as the GP breakdown per kill this is about what you could expect to pick up per kill if you did have Dagonoth bones noted 30k per kill from Supreme, 18k per kill from Rex, and 13k per kill from Prime. So for the gear setups, there's a lot of ways to go about this. So the first one is going to be the safe spot setup where you just kill Rex and nothing else. On the left hand side, we have kind of the lowest setup I would recommend to go with here. Most everything is noted there other than the blessings. You can downgrade the Varrock Helm to some sort of dragon granite whatever helm is of your stature at that point, but the left-hand side's a pretty low setup. The middle one is kind of a more med to high level safe spot option. Notice in both these setups, I have a ring of life for lower levels because there's a good chance that you can die here. So that would be nice. So you don't have to run back and get all your stuff. For the inventory, I have full Guthans. You don't have to bring that. If you are bringing it, probably swap out your Barrow's armor pieces for Guthans instead to save yourself some inventory space. Um, the rest of the inventory is basically listed there. To note some things, the Rune Throne Axe is needed to get inside of the lair. Also, a pet rock is needed to get inside of the lair by yourself. Other than that, nothing too crazy. I have some Relica teleports down there. That's a good teleport because you can teleport to Relica with them and then you can convert the teleport back to a regular house tab and then you have a house tab in your inventory as well so kind of a dual thing there that i enjoy but the inventory isn't that crazy as far as what you're going to need just a lot of anti-poisons that's what the antidote is for you'll be getting poisoned here all the time so you want to make sure that you really don't need too much prayer i just brought a full inventory just to you know allow most people the best chance of survival in case they do start to get hit there or something like that. And then three Ceredomen brews, four sharks. You shouldn't really need that much food, but again, just in case. Now into the tribrid setups where you'll be killing all three DKs here. This is the low level option. Um, not too bad. I mean, again, I recommend most people that probably have in their 80s of their combat stance at this point. So I think this gear is pretty attainable. Most everything is noted down below. Overall, what you're going to need is a melee based setup along with a four way range switch and a two or three way 
based magic switch and that's going to be pretty good for killing all of the DKs. On top of that for the inventory a lot like before here I do bring the antidotes just because this is a lower level setup. If you don't mind spending a little extra money instead of bringing antidotes you could swap out super restores for sand few serums. Sand few serums are prayer pots and anti-poisons kind of put together so that's a nice little thing but it does cost a bit more. And for the inventory there a lot like before really nothing too much of note. The one thing I do want to point out that I might not have already is that the rune pouch is going to be holding bloods, deaths, and whatever you're going to need for your highest blood based spell on the ancient spell book. It's a nice spell to have because then you can actually get your HP back from some of the monsters and allows your trips to go a little longer and you don't have to worry too much. For the med level option here, some nice upgrades throughout. However, the armor isn't that different. Um, I did put on a serpentine helm because that is nice for the anti-poisons. Um, if you are bringing a serp helm, which is kind of up to you, it does cost money. You won't need the sand few serums in the inventory and you can swap those out for restores, but that's up to you if you want to spend the money on the scales. Personally, they're pretty cheap right now, so I wouldn't mind it. I don't know how they'll be in the future though. The gear's mostly all listed there and the inventory is listed as well a lot of the same things that we had in the inventory before some added things here uh, number 17 is the Ceridoman God Sword a really nice special attack weapon if you have the funds to be able to purchase it because that special attack gives you HP and prayer from whenever you go and attack a monster with it if you do end up hitting and then 18 is an imbued heart which is nice for upping your magic level and just making the trip a lot easier and then finally, the high level option on the left hand side, a lot of nice armor upgrades there. You could get an Infernal Cape if you're crazy like that. And if you have a Karen Blessing 4, you could also use that, which would be a best in slot blessing. Um, for the inventory, some higher level setup stuff here, but basically the exact same thing before other than upgrading the armor that is within the inventory. Everything is listed there for you. And if you are really, really high level and you have the option to, a Scythe, a Twisted Bow, an Ellie, all of those things would be beautiful here if you have the money and ability to bring them. To get to the DK's lair first, you're going to need to get to the Water Birth Isle. The best way to get here is the Water Birth Isle Teleport, which is best located in your player-owned house. If you can have that in a nice little teleport room, that would be a great way to go about it. If not, you can use the teleport to get here if you'd like. Not typically what I'd do, but if you have the house teleport, that's a great one. The second option is getting kicked off of Lunar Isle. Um, if you have Lunar Diplomacy completed, you can then bang on Lunar Isle and then from there if you want to get kicked off just talk to one of the other bankers that you can't bank through and they will just kick you off the island since you don't have a seal of pass and then you'll be located right at the boat to then go over to the Water Birth Isle. The third is Fremenic Boots. This requires some diary completion and depending on how many diaries you have done depends on how many daily teleports you'll get. Fourth is the House Teleport. This is one that I think most people are going to be using. This is nice because again you can have two teleports in your inventory and the second one can be reverted back Back to a house tab. Uh, for this you'll either need your house located in Relica or you can use redirection scrolls to get those tablets that I was talking about. So either way you want to go about that is fine. Fifth is the Slayer Ring or Fairy Ring. Uh, either one works. You can either use a Slayer Ring if you have 75 crafting and the ability to make them and just teleport right on over there. Or you can use the Fairy Ring code AJR um, from whatever Fairy Ring you desire and you can make your way there that way. And then finally, the Camelot Teleport. This is the most basic, pretty far away, but if you need to use it, you gotta do it. And that requires 45 magic. Once you've made your way to the northwest side of Relica, just go ahead and Waterbirth Island, travel through Jarvald, and from there you will be on the island, a little crescent-shaped isle that we'll have, and make your way around the north side to the west. And right over here, you'll see the cave entrance. So just click over there, nice little AFK run, and you'll make your way there. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and drink up on a stamina dose. What I do before every inventory, if I'm coming here on like a, a main account, I will eat an anglerfish and drink a stamina dose and then just sprint here from there. I can't do that this video because I have to talk through it and I, I need a full stamina potion. But once you get inside, go ahead and pray melee and then make your way to the east. Personally, I like to go to the northeast side because I just keep the protect melee on and don't have to worry about anything. So come on over to this door. If you have a friend or a partner, you can just both stand on opposite sides. However, if you don't have one, 
your friend Pet Rock can do the trick for you. Um, from there, go ahead and run east a bit. If you do need a partner, maybe you want to save inventory space or something like that, you can join the Dagonoth Kings clan chat and then try to uh, meet up with someone that would be willing to do that with you. Um, once you make your way on through these giant rock crabs, you can throw on your Ruin Throne Axe, use a special attack, make sure your auto retaliates off so you don't use it on a crab or something, and just throw it at that door support. You might hit a zero, which is why I typically bring two, just in case. So once you've reached this ladder, you can go down it. I'm going to go up so I can show you the map. Up on screen now is all five levels. If you look at the in-game map, they won't match this exactly, but I edited it together so that it actually made sense for you. You can look at them there. Every red line is protect from melee, every green line is protect from range, and every blue one is protect from mage. And you just go chronologically level one, two, three, four, five, and you'll make your way all the way there. If you'd like to follow me there, we can do that right now. I'll enter back down this cave and continue to go down praying mage. Then in the next room, we're going to want to to pray range against these Dagonauts. And then the next room, we're going to want to pray melee against these giant crabs. From there, go south and you will find some more Dagonauts. From there, pray range and continue onward to the west. And once you see this little ladder right here, just go ahead and hop on down it. Pray mage and you'll continue on to the west and then you'll continue to pray mage for a little bit here as we'll have three rooms of these. Once you get up this ladder though, you're going to want to switch to melee for some giant rock crabs. You don't have to switch melee that quick, I probably did it a little too early, but just continue on through here. Once you've made it to the east side, go ahead and protect range from these Dagonauts and you'll want to continue to do that for a bit. It's a nice little hike over here. And once we go up the ladder, there will be a, a small little room up here with some added Dagonauts. Beyond that, just continue north. You'll uh, see a nice little room over here on the side, but always kind of fun to look at. Once you get into this last little Dagonoth room, protect from melee because these only attack with melee. So keep on running through and then to the northeast, you will see a ladder. Now we're at level five. This is almost a DK's. It's a nice little run, but if you know what you're doing, it's not that terrible. Um, continue to protect melee through these rock lobsters until we get to the end here. And then we'll want to protect range as we run into this nice little open area with a ton of random NPCs. From there, I'm going to protect range and continue onward. Uh, here there is the standard or slayer cave. There are two different ones you can enter into depending on if you're doing it normally or on a slayer task if you're on a slayer task you can hop into either of them it does not matter at dk's this was never originally here but they added a nice little spot that you can go to and hop worlds and check and see if people are inside this is nice because it used to be terrible to log out here so i'm so happy that they did this and it allows us to go ahead and talk about what we want to see whenever we go down into the dagonoth lair as far as what to expect from Dagonoth Kings, up on screen now I have a picture of the room and kind of what it's going to look like. Those ovals represent the aggro zones of each of the Dagonoth Kings. Remember that Prime is going to be the most dangerous and Supreme will be the second most dangerous. So we kind of have the two worst ones right where the ladder is to the room. That's important because whenever we go in, depending on how we're going about it, we're going to want either neither of them in sight or we're just going to want Supreme in sight. If the Prime is in sight of the ladder and attacks you as soon as you go down, unless you're good at this, you just want to get out immediately. If you're good at this and can pray or flick and do all that, then you're fine and you can really get the rotation started pretty easily. If you're not good at that though, you're going to want to avoid the Prime. Also in the room, there are three different safe spots. These will be used to kill Rex, so Rex is essentially not anything you have to worry about it's really supreme and prime and the only hard part of this trip is the initial setup once you have it set up honestly Dagonoth Kings are a breeze but that's not to say that the setup isn't difficult so let's go ahead and talk about it um, in terms of getting down here you're going to want to pray mage and then go on over to the ladder um, I'm gonna need to find an open world first so now that we have an open world looking at the lair um, we'll just do a couple of examples here live so this one not good because the prime is right there so whenever they're both right there the prime and the supreme you don't want to be down there because you're just gonna soak damage another example here uh, this would be really good if you were someone that was tribriding all three of them because I have the supreme basically isolated down here here in its own corner so the prime's almost never going to see me and so i could just stand here and attack it all day that would be beautiful and really this is just a nice easy setup after a second try i'll go into a couple other examples where i actually set up the trip and go through it all but this was just a nice little run through for you 
So starting off with the easiest methods and then working our way up in terms of the Dagonoff Kings, this one, whenever I enter down below, I just immediately run south because this is going to be the best route around them all. As you can see, the Supreme didn't attack me at all, so I just skirted around the corner, and that's what you're going to want to do. Once you make your way all the way to the east, then you'll be good to kill Rex. Um, if you want to, go ahead and throw your staff on long range just so you can make sure you don't have to go out there in any of the aggro zones, but you should be good. From there, just pray melee whenever he's in range and run up along one of the edges here. He essentially gets stuck everywhere, so it's a really easy time if you just want to go ahead and kill Rex. Honestly, one of the easiest bosses to do in-game. Um, getting down here and setting it up might not be the easiest, but once you can get down here, it's just letting Mage do its work. You don't have to take really any damage at all other than the little side creatures that'll hit you every now and then, but overall, I can't complain. You can also use the other side if you'd like to be able to safe spot it over here here for some reason maybe you want to be closer to prime if you're going to be uh, doing a method where you kill two or maybe three but if you're just killing Rex you can just sit here all day it'll take them a minute and a half to respawn and from there you'll be good to go if you have the facilities to kill Rex but you're like I'm not sure if I can kill all three the next best method would be to go ahead and kill Rex and then if you want to practice some tribrid you could go and then get on the prime with a nice range setup make sure he's far enough away from the supreme and then go ahead and go to town in this case, we're assuming that you're not going to be able to kill all three quick enough. So given that, you can just go ahead and knock down the Prime for half of its HP or however far you can get it without fully killing it. And then after that, you can go ahead and get back to killing the Rex. And then once you kill the Rex a second time, then you go in and finish off the Dagonoth Prime, kill him, and then you have a free kill at the Supreme because you'll have a ton of time in between kill timers. So essentially, you'll kill two Rex for every one prime and one supreme that you kill it's a nice way around it that allows you to also work on getting some other kills without having the ability to necessarily kill all three of them and then finally if you're going to kill all three whenever you're going down you want the ranger close to you and the prime preferably far away in this clip i throw on some boosting prayers i'd recommend to do that whenever you're setting up the trip because it is going to be beneficial and just kind of speeding up everything and making sure you don't get uh, attacked by two of them in this clip i do get attacked by prime for a second so it's a good example of what can happen if it does just stay calm go ahead and throw on your protect from mage and just time up the hits if you can um, if not then go ahead and step out and try again um, you'll get better at it over time if you uh, absolutely would like to and you want to learn from it um, once you've killed supreme though then just go ahead and hop on rex i recommend this order because um, rex isn't going to do you much harm so if you're a little slow on the prime supreme kills um, rex isn't going to hurt you you can just sit here like this and you'll be perfectly fine you can save spot him and and if the prime appears like he is in the background and he's just kind of sitting here hitting me being annoying i can just pray mage and i'll be perfectly fine so you want to start with the supreme then go on to the rex in this nice little safe spot by the ladder this is my personal preference it kind of keeps them all a little closer if you ever need any of your hp boosted you can always do that with the ancient spell book and your blood spells i'd always recommend that if you're not going to be picking up the dagonoth bones because you don't have them noted feel free to go ahead and bury them and once you get done with the rex kill just go ahead and hop on prime you you might have to use some range boosting prayers or something like that if you want to get through this kill a little quicker um, you can always back up a little bit and then throw your weapon on long range if you don't think you're going to get the kill done in time um, this prevents you from getting attacked by both the prime and the supreme which if they are on the same tick or you're not good at prayer flicking or something like that it can be a bit annoying the worse you are the farther back that you would like to stand so that's just kind of a rule of thumb this rotation was a bit slow for me because i wasn't using any of my boosting potions for the most part made it a little bit harder but from there just go ahead and get right back on into the cycle uh, get back into the supreme kill with melee and just keep switching around remember you always have a Saradom and god sword if you want to throw a special attack in there of course if you had the gp for it and you decided to bring it but honestly a really great task i love it for slayer i think that it is a nice opportunity to make some good money and have a nice methodical kind of killing session of some bosses where it offers up a little bit of diversity and I forgot to add, if you would ever like to log out here, but you cannot, you can always just sit down in a corner of the room, like somewhere where you were killing the Dagonoth Rex, and then just X out of your client. It'll take you a little bit, but your account will log out. If you want to be even more sure that you're not going to die, just pray magic before you leave, because sometimes if someone enters the room, they could lure the Prime up towards you, and it could attack you. So keep that in mind, and also remember what world you died in, if you were to somehow die. Uh, Exologging is almost perfect, but 
there is a small, small percent chance that something bad could happen. But yeah, that is going to be it for this Danganronth King's Guide. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Anything you want to see from me in the future, let me know in a comment down below, like I mentioned earlier. And on top of that, if you want to see more videos like this as soon as they go live, make sure to subscribe. And with that said, hopefully you have a wonderful day, and uh, peace.